Hello guys, and this afternoon we are talking about fuel injectors for your OM606. It's not something that we often hear about. We hear about the injector pumps, we hear about the turbo kits, but injectors are rarely spoken about. So today, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of information, a bit of in insight, some basics, um, and let you know whether we need performance injectors, upgraded should I say, whether we need to upgrade our injectors, or whether we're fine with what we've got. So let's have a look at some samples. So what I've prepared for you here is um, kind of the old and the new. So what we've got is here is our indirect injection injector for the OM606. And here we have a common rail direct injection injector for the OM613. Now these two are basically total ends of the spectrum. This is old school technology and this is basically what we're using up to date, modern. Uh, the injector style uh, has varied, but the direct injection common rail injector, same theory. So what are the major differences? Well, let's talk about the 606 injector first. I mentioned there that it was a pre-combustion uh, injector. So if we zoom in, I'll use a torch so you can see the tips of both of these. We'll look at the OM606 injector first. Now you can see there is a needle sticking out the end of there, like a little point. And basically when that injector operates, pressure builds up inside the injector, the needle pulls back and fuel is ejected in a pattern like I've drawn on there for you. Just a very um, sort of low degree cone. Now if we look at this direct injection injector, and we have a little zoom in there, look. Well, let's see if we can get it to zoom. You can see those tiny, tiny little holes. Now those tiny little holes are what delivers the diesel. Now, that leads me to the question that everybody asks. So first of all, people ask, do I need upgraded injectors for higher performance? Or how do I get upgraded injectors for higher performance? This is not like the common rail. So we aren't restricted to, uh, or, or direct injection, should I say, not common rail. We aren't restricted to a, a bunch of tiny little holes in the end of the injector to get that diesel in. With the Pintle style, we are able to dump as much fuel as we want, within reason, inside the cylinder without any restriction. So it's quite a big difference. Now, the reason uh, we don't use indirect injection Pintle style injectors anymore I shall show you now. So this is a pre-combustion chamber. And if we have a little close-up look at that, it, look how it has a similar pattern, a similar arrangement to those tiny little holes we just saw in the direct injection uh, injector. Now that's because it's doing a very similar job. It's diffusing the fuel uh, into the cylinder, um, but it's doing it on a much lower pressure scale which is why the holes are much larger and the whole thing is much larger. Now, this system works quite well because it allows us to have a relatively quiet, a relatively smooth diesel engine um, in comparison to direct injection engines of the day. So for something like a luxury car or what have you, this was really quite good, quite cutting edge. And with smaller elements, you'll have probably heard it yourself, they are beautifully smooth. That is one thing that Mercedes six cylinders and five cylinders are really known for. Now the problem is, um, if we look at this one next to it, now that direct, uh, that pre-chamber has unfortunately uh, suffered some serious heat damage. Now generally the reason for this is a failing injector. When the injector starts to fail and the needle isn't seating correctly, what happens is the fuel starts to drip and it starts to basically boil on the surface of the steel and it creates some serious hot spots in that zone. And over time, it creates fatigue and eventually the pre-chamber will fail. So from like a, a heavy duty diesel point of view, the direct injector actually possibly has the advantage. However, the pre-chamber design, if your injector is kept in good condition and it doesn't leak and you're paying attention to noises and things like that that don't seem right or don't seem normal or smoke, uh, idle and things, 
you can catch it early enough and you're never going to have a problem with a, a pre-chamber. Another reason that we see pre-chambers fail is if people try and build their own injector pumps at home or what have you, and they don't correctly phase the injector pump and it's not firing at the correct time, again, that can cause a lot of heat in one particular, in one particular cylinder over time and then that can make it fail. So that's also one of the reasons um, as time's gone on and we've gone to modern uh, common rail, uh, I mentioned about the smoothness, as we've gone onto the common rail, um, to get the smoothness back again, because we're direct injecting into the cylinder, uh, we use like a multiple um, pattern of injection. So whereas this Pintle one has very little choice in which it's going to inject because everything is mechanical and it starts at this point and it ends at this point, the direct injection injector uh, that's common rail is uh, permanently fed high pressure but switched electronically at the given time. And that allows us uh, some real luxuries and one of them is the fact that you can do scattered injection where we can do a little bit way before TDC and we can do multiple stages and that give a really soft combustion. And that really soft combustion uh, gives us a nice quiet petrol-like sound at idle, which we couldn't get in the old days. Right, so next thing I'm gonna talk about is something that um, obviously people ask, do I need to upgrade my 606 injector? Well, in a word, no. What I do advise is that the injector is in perfect working order. Because if that injector is sticking, dripping, leaking, it's gonna cause those hot spots that's gonna make the pre-chamber fail and damage the engine. So an injector rebuild, yes, I do advise. Um, however, an injector upgrade is not really necessary. If you see some of the really high horsepower stuff that we've built in the past, um, some of the really early stuff, it was always with standard injectors. So what does get changed when these injectors get rebuilt? So the standard injection pressure of a turbo 606 is 135 bar um, and that works very very well like I say up to high horsepower. What we tend to do when we rebuild them is go to 150 bar um, so we can slightly shorten the duration. We've got no uh, limit to how much fuel we can put in. Uh, we've got plenty of fuel coming from behind the injector so we aren't really restricted by a tight window so that's what we do. We increase the pressure a little bit I have heard of people uh, trying higher pressures still, and that has uh, yielded some results, but personally, I've not seen it. So 150 bar is where I'm happy and say in, in a safe zone uh, with new nozzles, and obviously the rest of the re in injector rebuilt, cleaned, etc. So the next thing, uh, a commonly asked question, is the heat shields. So what we have here is two heat shields. This one is a genuine Mercedes, and this one is a VW heat shield. Now, there are arguments that the VW heat shield, because it has the smaller center hole, or is made of a different material, uh, protects the end of the injector slightly better. Um, I personally, I'm, I don't disbelieve it, but I have had absolutely no issues with using the genuine Mercedes item. So, my advice is always go with the genuine stuff. I do believe the Mercedes genuine one is slightly more expensive, so that could be a reason why people argue the other one's better. But what I will show you is the thickness of the washer is different. So a genuine Mercedes uh, washer, 2.69 millimeters. And then the VW, 3.6. So nearly a millimeter thicker. Now, if we were talking about a direct injection injector like this one, if we were lifting that injector a millimeter, that might actually cause problems because that would be potentially not spraying into the combustion chamber in the cylinder. With the pintle type, much tighter angle, probably not gonna cause any issues um, due to the very shallow injection angle. But would I risk it? No, I probably wouldn't. So. I'll show you how it, how it actually fits. If you look at this, this is interesting. Look how crooked it sits in that pre-combustion chamber. 
So the reason for that is it creates a swirl that actually goes on inside and around the pre-chamber ball that's, uh, that lives inside here. Now, if I get my torch and I shine it in and have a look in there, that little ball, a bit higher, that's it, can you see it? That little ball, like a pit, is the, uh, it helps to diffuse and to atomize the diesel that's actually going into that chamber. It helps to circulate it and mix it with the air and create the combustion. Now, when those pips fail, for the similar reasons to that we've just spoke about, uh, incorrect timing or a dripping injector, um, it makes the engine smoke really, really bad at idle um, because that mixture, that, that sort of benefit that it's trying to give uh, is no longer there. This large hole that's in the side of the pre-chamber is actually for the glow plug and that helps to initiate that combustion. You imagine on a cold engine, red hot mixture inside there, it really helps to amplify the speed in which you can get that engine started. Now let's talk about injection pressures. So the uh, injectors uh, on these, like I've just mentioned, is uh, 150 bar. Now 150 bar is the opening pressure that we will set the injector to. That isn't the dynamic pressure. Um, you imagine once it's pushed open at 150 bar, the pressure as the plunger pushes up in the pump does continue to increase until it goes down and then it closes again. And that pressure can reach very, very, very high levels. Um, the, the common rail injectors, I think the factory pressure on a 613 is 1250 bar, that's rail entering there. Um, but we can't directly compare them. We can't say, ooh, that one's 1250 bar, it's so much higher injection pressure than this one. Because realistically, we don't know what the dynamic injection pressure is of this. Um, I would say it's going to be pretty high, you know. Um, I wouldn't like to guess, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's going to probably be over 500 bar. It might, it, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but the dynamic pressure will be much, much higher than the opening pressure. Uh, and one day I'll probably have some measuring equipment and I'll be able to give you an accurate answer to that. Right, so we've been over the main points, what the injector is, how it works, pre-chambers, etc. So now we're going to do the easy bit, and that's to fit them. Um, so obviously, like I discussed, I'm going to be using the Mercedes-style uh, washers. And what you can see in there is a little bit of engine oil. So all the threads are oiled up, the washer's oiled up. We're not going to use any grease, because you can imagine whatever you put in there is going to get baked like a cake. And you don't want a grease cake baked into your pre-chamber, do you? A little bit of oil, however, will wash away. So normally this would have the cam carrier on uh, and those little trumpets, so it'd be a bit deeper. And the best way is just drop it in and then flick it. And if it lands the wrong way like that has, then you'll have a magnet to hand and flip it over. And that is literally the best way, because if you put it on the end of a magnet, it, it just comes out with it. So I always find, chuck it down the hole, Wherever it lands, flip it if it's the wrong way. Now, I will also mention, look, you can see the direction. The bit with the hollow section, the kind of the, the concave, goes up. So the, the pointy sort of end, convex, down. I think I've said that right. Um, and then, same thing applies with the injector. All it is a little bit of engine oil. We're not wanting to cake these up in some copper grease or anything like that. I know there's some guys out there that love the copper grease. Don't get me wrong, I like myself a bit of copper grease, but not on injectors. And very careful, we're not wanting to damage that pinful. We're going to be careful with it. So screw it in, it screws in at an angle, like that by hand. And the torque setting is 40 Newton meters. So you don't want to over tighten these because it can cause the bodies to jam and to stick and to all have all sorts of problems. So 40 Newton meters and what you need is a 22 mil deep socket. Now this I believe is a lambda sensor socket, like an exhaust lambda sensor socket and it's quite long. If you want to know how long it is, I'm going to give you all the good stuff. Look at that, it's 110 mil long. So that fits nicely over the injector and then we're simply going to torque it up. This is the world's, <laughs> it's not the world's biggest tar wrench, but it's too big for this job. But it's set to 40 Newton meters and it says snap-on on it, so it can't possibly be wrong, can it? At 
900 pounds or whatever it costs. So yeah, just gently down and then and that's it. And it really feels like nothing when you tighten them up. You don't want to be winching them up or swinging on them. And then just repeat the process, put them all in and then connect up your injector return line. Now, this is a, another important little thing. Injector return line, we only use the genuine stuff and the genuine stuff is made by Native. Continental. Mm. The genuine stuff is made by Continental um, and it's good stuff. That kind of like black stuff that you see from the motor factors doesn't seem to last, it pops off. And that other stuff, I've seen quite a few people using like that fluoro tube, that um, Tigon that you see people use on remote control cars and remote control planes. It's like, it's like clear um, and you see it on remote control cars and stuff. Why are you using that on your engines? That is just garbage. Throw that in the bin, use some proper braided diesel rated hose. It generally lasts 20 years. So I'd say that's a good purchase. And if you want a bag, buy it off us today. We've got bags of these pre-cut ready for you to fit. So there we have it. And that is, a, that is another point that I will make, um, seeing as I've brought you all this video. Uh, we do sell this stuff. Um, Pre-chambers, no, we can't. We can't sell them. Nobody makes them yet. Um, we are working on a design. It's an interesting material, uh, but nobody sells them yet. And I don't think you can get them new from the dealer either. And yes, NA ones are different to turbo ones. So if you're gonna swap them over, swap them all. NA injectors are actually a different pressure to turbo injectors as well, 115 bar instead of 135. Um, so no, we don't do them. Yes, we do the injector washers. Yes, we do the return line. And yes, we do the injector rebuilds. No, there is no orifices that are larger or opened up or made bigger. There is no performance gains and there isn't for anybody's injectors for these. If you would like to buy a set of these injectors dead easy it doesn't matter where you are in the world we keep these in stock so all you need to do is put your injectors in a box wrap them up nice and tight try and drain most of the diesel out of them put something absorbent in a plastic bag package them up and send them to us at diesel pump uk which would be diesel pump uk unit d a19 business park selby road york england if you're not in england and then y019 6QR is our postcode, uh, our phone number's on the website if you need it. Uh, and that's it, and we will get you an exchange set sent out. Like I say, we keep them in stock. It will be, as soon as yours land, we'll check that they are actually 606 injectors, uh, and then we'll get your rebuilt set sent straight out. So nice quick turnaround. Oh yes. Yes, very important, very important make sure you put your details in the box. Extremely important, because we do get lots of boxes that arrive, pumps and various things, no details, and it can take us months to work out who and where they've come from. So please put a note in the box and try and keep it separate from the injectors. So if it gets soaked in diesel, we can still read it. Good pre-chamber, good, bad pre-chamber, good pre-chamber, bad pre-chamber. Do you, see, do you see where I'm getting at with this? You look younger on 0.5. Well, that's good. Yeah. I think you can you make that look better? No. Oh, okay. Good pre-chamber. <laughs> Bad pre-chamber. So we're going to install that one? Yeah, six of those. Yes. Six of those. I've heard that it gives you higher horsepower. What else gives you higher horsepower? Loctite. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. <laughs>